Good evening, and thank you for joining in on our virtual alumni town hall. Why are we doing these town halls? I think it's important, and so I talked to our alumni development staff about how can we engage our alumni, how can we keep them up to date on what's going on on campus, and the town hall became the natural answer. I think it's great. Uh, one, it's great because you are our best ambassadors. Uh, when our alumni speak to others, uh, you can give the real message on what it's like to be at, at Bellarmine, and that's why we want to keep you updated. And second, we want to keep you updated because we want to keep you engaged. An engaged alumni, it works better for all of us. Uh, you can help us referring students for admissions. You can help us re uh, helping with careers and uh, job placement, and it's really important. So all of these things combined to one of my favorite things about Bellarmine is how engaged our alumni are. So I hope you enjoy the program. Please give us feedback uh, at the conclusion of any of the town halls that you participate in, and go Knights. Hello and welcome. My name is Stephanie Piper Riley, and I'm the executive director of the Bellarmine University Alumni Association and proud two-time graduate. I'm thrilled to be with you this evening for our second conversation in our alumni town hall series. And tonight we're focusing our attention on Bellarmine partnerships in Louisville and the region. I wanna thank our alumni joining us on Zoom, but also want to extend a warm hello to those tuning in through Facebook Live. Um, I know we very much appreciate Dr. Donovan who is actively working to make our university a stronger community partner. In fact, just last Friday, she led a Bellarmine team on a site visit to Park Duval Community Health Center. Bellarmine currently offers some health services there, but we're looking for ways to expand that very important collaboration. And that is why we are here tonight. Bellarmine has enjoyed many valuable partnerships with local businesses, corporations, and nonprofits. But as part of our strategic plan, we are eager to expand learning opportunities and strengthen career pathways for students through forming more community-based partnerships and coalitions. And as alumni joining us on tonight's call, we hope that this opportunity allows you to hear about some of our current partnerships, but also gets you to think about your connections and how we might be able to build upon your connections in the community and create even more pipelines for Bellarmine and our Louisville community at large. So let's get started and meet tonight's panelists. Our first is Alicia McLean, is the Director of Community and Education Initiatives at Microsoft Future of Work. Alicia's work focuses on increasing equity and inclusion in the fields of data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. She will speak specifically tonight on the Butterfly Project, a program connecting students with community issues and partners to apply skills in data and technology. Joining us too is Eva Park, a soon-to-be Bellarmine graduate pursuing degrees in both psychology and criminal justice studies. Eva was interested in the Butterfly Project because two of her passions are research and social justice, and she was eager to get involved as a student intern to learn how those passions could intersect. Amanda Tyndall is the Assistant Vice President of Student Affairs for Advising, Records, and Retention at Jefferson Community and Technical College. In her 17 years at JCTC, Amanda has talked with students trying to make their next step and loves to share that Bellarmine is a wonderful choice. Amanda has been working on the 2BU creation from its inception in 2018, and we'll speak on that tonight. She's a 2004 Bellarmine graduate and married her Bellarmine sweetheart, Robbie Tyndall, and has four boys who love cheering on the Bellarmine Knights. Now, someone who has benefited from that incredible partnership is Mandela Grappera, who is in his first semester at Bellarmine, Mandela is from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where he experienced difficult conditions in refugee resettlement camps. Mandela is now at Bellarmine because of the 2BU program and is pursuing a degree in international studies and foreign relations. We also have Lauren Coffey, a two-time Bellarmine graduate and is the current employer engagement coordinator in Bellarmine's Career Development Center. 
among Lauren's many roles is overseeing the university's Live, Work, Lead, Serve program, funded by the James Graham Brown Foundation and the Ogle Foundation, connecting students with community partners where they earn paid academic internship credit. And finally, Jim Sprodlin from President of CEO of Park Community Credit Union. Jim was born and raised in Louisville and has been with Park since 1995. In 2010, Jim was promoted to Executive Vice President and was named President and CEO that following year. Jim has been married to his wife of 35 years and we're proud to share that both of his children received their master's degree from Bellarmine. Go Knights! Um, so we invited our alumni audience and those who had registered to share questions in advance, and I know we came up with a few as well, but we really want to get started. We have a half an hour here tonight to, to talk all about partnerships, so let's get started. You know, our first alumni town hall last month, we spoke all about athletics, and we've had so many alumni from all across the country tune in this year to watch our men's and women's basketball teams on ESPN. And you can't miss the fact that Park Community is really one of our most visible partners in athletics with their name on the court in Freedom Hall. So Jim, I'm gonna turn this over to you if you could share a little bit about this partnership and how it's, it's developed over the years. Sure, uh, thanks a lot, Stephanie. Uh, the Bellarmine Partnership started about 10 years ago, actually. And it actually began in the athletic department uh, where we began sponsoring Coach Davenport's TV shows. Uh, we did that for a couple of years. That led into a larger relationship at Knights Hall, which included the scoreboard and the floor there, which we were fortunately able to bring over to Freedom Hall uh, when that happened earlier this year. Uh, over time, that relationship grew uh, more in depth. We were able to do financial education for a lot of the athletic teams, uh, not just the men's basketball team, but the women's team and some of the other sports that are out there. And eventually we were able to turn the relationship into a university-wide one where we were actually designated the official credit union of the university. So that designation is something that allows us to offer credit union membership uh, to any of the students, the faculty, the staff, uh, really any of the fans, supporters of the university can join the credit union. Uh, we were able to provide scholarships uh, to the school. We've been able to do internships. And in fact, we've actually hired a few of the interns when they've graduated. Uh, we've had them come through our marketing department, our lending department, uh, internal audit, and I know also had some. So they've been in several different areas with us and, and have turned into valuable employees there. We've also been able to provide speakers to, to certain events that have been out there. So it's turned into a pretty in-depth relationship. Uh, we currently uh, are trying to get the word out even more about Bellarmine with co-branded debit cards and Visa cards go along with the products we've got. Uh, so that's been very successful uh, to, with us also. When we were looking for a partner in the educational field, we looked at Bellarmine, we did some due diligence, and we found out that, that Bellarmine was very committed uh, to helping the community grow and making an impact on the community, uh, that they're committed to a diverse range of students that they bring onto campus. And we felt that fit right in with our philosophy, which is to try and offer fair and affordable financial services to everybody throughout the community. So it turned out to be a natural fit. It's one that we're extremely proud of, and it's really one of our most valued relationships that we have. Well, Jim, we really couldn't agree more. I know I see uh, Sharon Williams on the call tonight, one of our alumni board members who also works at Park. And I tell you, Jim, your team's a lot of fun. Um, you all come out and attend our um, alumni events and really just bring energy and a lot of fun. I don't know if you want to speak. I think you've you've attended some of those events yourself. Uh, what's what's kind of the the best event that we have, and and where do you? How do you do you enjoy attending those opportunities with alumni and how many connections do you make when you come to trivia night and, and check out a game in, in Freedom Hall? What, yeah, what's the, that like? The connections are very important to us. It gives us the, you know, the cliches gives us that networking opportunity uh, where, where we get out to meet everybody. Uh, trivia night's a really big one. I think our favorite one is where everybody drinks beer in the quad. That's the one we really <laughs> like to sponsor. Um, so we just love to get out to the events and get to meet. Uh, the people, whether they're members or prospective members, it, it doesn't matter. And, and then occasionally you run into somebody at another event that you're sponsoring that you didn't even know. And I've ran into Glenn Cossey at, at Habitat for Humanity events before. Uh, so you really just get out in the community and you and you get involved and you, and you find out what other people are involved in. And you find out that you've got these cross-sectional interests out there, uh, which is something that you can play into the relationship and, um, you know, get multiple interests going and multiple support in different areas. 
That's wonderful, Jim. Well, thank you so much. And we, we look forward to those in-person events here soon. And, and Brewer BU is, is top of my list as well. So thank you. Um, so let's move on to another important partner, um, the Butterfly Project. Um, a collaboration between Bellarmine, Microsoft, Central High School, uh, the Louisville Urban League, and Humana. Um, Alicia, tell us briefly about how this program works and how it benefits beyond the partners, but really the, the city at large. Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, thank you so much uh, for having me here. And uh, thank you for your enthusiasm, uh, Stephanie. And just to piggyback on what uh, Jim was saying about sort of cross-sectional partnerships and cross-sectional interests. Um, this is just yet another example of um, an opportunity for us to uh, partner uh, where sort of our interests are all aligned. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't uh, give a shout out to uh, Lily Massa McKinley, who's at Bellarmine, um, this, uh, and Dr. Rob Kelly also, uh, who's the chair of the computer science department. Um, they This really stemmed from uh, them, uh, us convening a meeting between them and industry leaders and talking about um, or making sure with their second uh, bachelor's degree in computer science that uh, the, the programming and the curriculum that they were teaching and the languages that they were teaching were aligned with industry's needs. Um, and then after that, uh, or during that conversation, uh, I kind of brought up that, you know, hey, and we also want to think about, you know, in the planning of the programming and in the implementation, and uh, really from every angle, uh, how we're going to change the paradigm of, you know, who is, who sees themselves in computer and data science. Um, and, and so I didn't really expect anything to come of it, but Lily followed up and we have it had a sort of an explosive, um, it, that sounds, it wasn't explosive in that we like, we're angry at each other, just that like um, an idea exploded um, and it was the butterfly project and, um, and Lily specifically brought up uh, the, the document of Path Forward, which is a, a framework for how to uh, move the city forward um, and, and, and really uh, have a reckoning with the systemic inequities that have existed uh, against uh, uh, black, black people in Louisville. And it's an extremely progressive document. And I was honestly sort of shocked that she brought it up. I, I thought, whoa, that's, <laughs> I don't know, with a, an institution like Bellarmine, if that's, you know, but it, it, was, it was extremely forward thinking. And, and I'll just say that I have found that in working with Bellarmine, that they're always very innovative. You all are always very innovative and forward thinking um, in, in, in your approach to education. Um, and it's, while it seems like, like how, you know, how does this department, uh, how did this uh, partnership come about? It really aligns with, you know, everything that all of our institutions are about. Um, in with the uh, Future of Work Initiative, we are striving to change uh, the paradigm around, uh, you know, the, the, the um, I guess, homogeny that exists in computer science um, and thinking about ways, innovative ways to change that paradigm. Um, you know, Bellarmine is, is committed to a program of ethics education uh, and extending that education beyond the Bellarmine campus. Um, Central High School is interested in having the first uh, AI for social justice, um, you know, magnet of, and, and so it just, it was a, it was a, um, a, a an, an easy partnership in some way, in, a, in every way. Um, and it was almost, I was going to say fortuitous in, in, in some ways, uh, because it happened right after, obviously, our city's uh, reckoning with uh, systemic inequities around the killing of uh, Breonna Taylor. Um, so it just, it, it made sense. Um, there was synergy. There was a lot of learning that took place, I would say for myself personally. Um, it was a journey, and we all, I think, have realized things along the way. Um, but ultimately, uh, what we've been able to do is uh, create a program uh, that uses data in sort of non-traditional ways, although this, I think, should be the traditional way. Um, so the students actually team, so there's students from Bellarmine and students from Central High School. Um, they align with one of those five core tenets in the Path Forward document, which is jobs, justice, health, education, and housing. Um, and then they partner with a community nonprofit that is focused on that work within one of those five core tenants. Um, and then they actually find open data sets. 
Um, and also, in addition to that, go through a data analytics course and then take that knowledge that they've learned in the analytics course and actually apply it in a way um, that they can actually give the data, give the data visualizations uh, that they've made that support that nonprofit over to the nonprofit so that that nonprofit can use it uh, to further its mission, whether that be in uh, giving, re giving the story and the reasoning behind their nonprofit or applying for grants. You know, there's obviously all kinds of things that you can do with it. And additionally, it also exposes uh, students to uh, data in a way that maybe they they never thought about. Um, it, you know, it it, it it sparks it or it's designed to spark interest in non traditional students, not just racially, but also um, major. You know, and and interest wise, um, we need more diversity in many ways in data science and thinking about how data can tell a story rather than like someone who wants to, you know, have three screens in front of them and, you know, is in love with SQL, um, which is great. SQL's great, but uh, we also need to open the doors for others. Uh, data science um, is a great field and more people should be exposed to data science. And honestly, data science as a field and artificial intelligence in a as a field um, is is much better with much with a more diverse uh, group of people that are participating in it. That's wonderful. It sounds like the partnership that keeps giving, um, keeps getting forward. And we are going to be dropping a link in the chat that has um, some more resources on the Butterfly Project. And obviously, we do love hearing from our community partners, but I know our alumni love hearing from our students, too. Um, Eva, I'm going to turn this question over to you. Um, what has your experience been so far with the Butterfly Project, and how does the um, the internship contribute to what you hope to achieve um, after graduating from Bellarmine? Yeah, so thank you for having me speak as well. We just wrapped up yesterday our final presentations with the Butterfly Project, so that's exciting. As a student, I've gotten to learn and grow quite a lot with this Butterfly Project. I entered the project with a passion for social justice and an understanding that I was comfortable with data and passionate about it. Um, that definitely did expand, especially my understanding of what it meant to be comfortable with data expanded. We had the privilege to be part of the General Assembly Data Analytics course. And in that course, I got to grow my comfortability and expand my knowledge with Excel. More so, I learned how to operate some new softwares like SQL and Tableau, and those were entirely new systems to me. So although I had previously considered myself a research nerd, looking back, I had no idea the potential data analysts, analysts had um, and essentially how it can be connected to social justice in such a powerful way. More so, my understanding of social justice greatly expanded with this program. Something that I'd like to share from this program is the Jemez principles. So the Jemez principles are a newer way of addressing social justice that rework the way social justice gets addressed. One of these principles that really stuck out to me was the demand for narrative justice to be in the hands of the community or those most impacted by social issues. This is in great contrast to the white savior social justice that can sometimes happen and that takes the narrative away and tries to provide a solution based on what the person giving the solution thinks is best. Um, navigating narrative justice into our final project was really imperative and will remain imperative in my work after college. So since I am about to graduate in May, very excited. I am beginning to look at advocacy positions specifically. I find that to be a really important role. I'm looking at them in the field of like client, victim, and patient advocacy. And all of those really do touch on the importance of narrative justice and listening to the person who is most impacted by the issue. Ultimately, my goal is to become a sexuality therapist and comprehensive sex educator. The idea of narrative justice is really behind all these passions, as I believe it to be the utmost importance to listen to those um, who are the needs and the center of every social justice issue. And I am really excited for this next step in my life and very thankful for the opportunity to be a part of the Butterfly Project and to get to have learn and grow with the Butterfly Project. I think it was a wonderful experience that I am really appreciative for. 
Well, Eva, thank you so much. And we look forward to welcome you into the Alumni Association here soon. Um, I'd like to next turn it over to one of our graduates, um, Amanda Tyndall. Um, you know, last year we heard that Bellarmine and Jefferson were partnering, but the truth is there's always been a, a path for Jefferson students to find success at Bellarmine. Um, this partnership just added really some structure and better support for transfer students. So Amanda, um, talk a little bit about what makes transfer partnerships like this one valuable to your institution, to students, and why Bellarmine was a great fit. I agree, Stephanie. We've always worked with Bellarmine in trying to get students from JCTC directly to Bellarmine. But partnerships like this are so important because it makes it more intentional. It makes it um, an opportunity for individuals to really grab hold of and understand. So let me tell you a little bit about it from my perspective, but I'm really excited to hear about it from Mandela's perspective, who's gone through this wonderful program. But I will just say Bellarmine um, really rose to the occasion in this experience with building a partnership between our institutions. JCTC is known as opening the doors to education for our community. Bellarmine just opened the doors for a liberal arts education for our students in many ways that is just, um, just so exciting as an alumni and also as an educator. Two thirds of Bellarmine's or of Jefferson students are Pell eligible and one third of our students are considered from a URM or an underrepresented minority population. And these populations that we work with in, in the Louisville community need a local, wonderful liberal arts education opportunity and Bellarmine has made that achievable. So it's so important for institutions to work together to make opportunities to make our community stronger. It gives local students an opportunity they have not had and um, it gives it structure so that when we sit down and talk to a student one-on-one, -on -one, we can say, here's your cost, here's your deliverables, you will be out of um, education in four years with a degree that has strong uh, connections and ties to the local community. Thank you so much, Amanda. And yes, you're right. We'd love to hear from Mandela. Um, Mandela, we're so excited to have you as a new student at Bellarmine. So welcome to the family. Um, we're gonna be drop, dropping in uh, the chat a link that talks a little bit more about the Jefferson to Bellarmine partnership. But Mandela, we'd love to hear it from you. Can you tell us about your path from Africa to Jefferson and then what made a, a transfer to Bellarmine appealing to you? Yeah, thank you so much for having me this evening. Uh, my name is Mandela Gapala. I'm from Democratic Republic of Congo. I moved to the United States in 2017 through a refugee resettlement program. Uh, before I came to the United States, I was a student. And when I got here, I decided to continue with my education. And I started at JCTC in 2018 and uh, graduated uh, in 2020, last year in December. Um, before I graduate, that's when I learned that um, uh, Bellamine has started a new partnership for the transfer student from JCTC to uh, Bellamine. And that's when I applied for uh, both school and uh, scholarship. And I'm so glad that I was, uh, I was accepted for both the scholarship and the uh, school. Uh, some of the things that appeal to me uh, is uh, the small classes uh, that Bellamine have um, that are uh, the same as what I was used to JCTC and uh, uh, the great relationship that the student and the professors have, which I am now experiencing and uh, which is awesome and uh, very helpful. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story, and we love to continue that conversation, but we do need to move on. Um, Lauren, turning it over to you, um, your work in Bellarmine's Career Development Center um, is really centered around partnerships between Bellarmine and employers. I know you speak to alumni each week, um, helping them find interns and part-time workers and full-time employees from both our student body and our alumni community. Um, you're specifically talking today about the Live, Work, Lead, Serve program. Um, what makes it unique and how do you measure success? Yes, thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, and as you mentioned, so many of our alumni partners who help provide such amazing uh, internship and job opportunities for our students and serve as incredible mentors to students uh, in their career discovery process. I would love to share a little bit about the Live, Work, Lead, Serve program. I cannot do so without first thanking our grant 
partners who helped make this program possible. So first and foremost, just wanna thank the James Graham Brown Foundation and the Ogle Foundation. Uh, this program is centered on providing experiential learning opportunities for students who are interested in serving in the nonprofit and government sectors of our communities. Um, oftentimes these experiences go unpaid. So through the generosity of our grant partners, we are able to provide stipends for students alongside uh, some really intentional programming to help cultivate some great leadership skills uh, and focus on community engagement as part of that experience. Uh, we really see this program as a win, win, win. Um, so in listening to our community partners and listening to our students, hearing about the types of things that they wanna see from this program. Um, so from the community partner lens, uh, they have an opportunity to add additional capacity to their organization, organizations that might, uh, might be stretched thin from a work capacity standpoint and to be able to provide funding uh, for that experience. For our students, uh, we know that many of our students are also completing part-time jobs. Um, and so, you know, to be able to provide a paid internship, which is gonna provide relevant work experience for that student and uh, be connected to that path to helping them discover meaningful work in their career field of interest. Um, definitely a win for students. Uh, and then also a win for Bellarmine. You know, we have uh, students that are completing uh, a significant portion of our students, um, up to 87% in this last, uh, last graduating cohort, completing experiential learning um, opportunities for academic credit. So we know that our students completing internships, they are more likely to persist and complete their degree. We know that the students that complete these experiences are uh, more likely to have successful postgraduate outcomes. So certainly lots of wins along the way, but we've been measuring a lot uh, of this work through the program since its inception in 2018, the summer of 2018. So I wrote some of those down. I don't wanna miss those. Um, along the way, we have had uh, 60 student participants in the Live, Work, Lead, Serve program. What this is equated to is 7,200 hours of work with community partners in the Louisville and Southern Indiana area. So lots of capacity uh, there, which is incredible. We've worked with over 35 community partners throughout the program so far. Uh, students have earned 180 hours of academic credit. So moving closer and closer towards their degree completion. Uh, and as part of this program, Bellarmine has provided a scholarship for students to complete those for academic credits, so almost $150,000 of academic credit scholarships as part of this program as well. So we are so thrilled to keep this program going and uh, just high impact uh, uh, for all partners involved. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, Lauren, for speaking to that. And I know we're nearing on that seven o'clock hour, but I do want to make sure uh, maybe we just go through the, the group and the panelists one last final time. You know, part of the goal of this was for our alums to hear about some of our current partnerships, but also um, to think about um, supercharging these efforts. So my final question for each panelist, and maybe you can just talk for 30 seconds, um, you know, when we talk about the value of a Bellarmine partnership, um, I want to ask our panelists, what do you want our alumni community to know? Um, how can they get involved and why should they get involved? Um, is it hiring a student, building a new community connection? Um, as a panelist, what do you want our alumni to know? And um, we'll start off maybe with Jim, if you don't mind again. Oh, Jim, you are on mute. I'm so sorry. I knew I would forget that eventually. <laughs> every time. I think if I had to sum it up real quick, I, I would say is that that our goal, we strive to be not just another financial institution, our whole commitment is to the impact that we can make in the community. We even started a nonprofit arm a couple of years ago called Inspire. And we're gonna take Inspire and Park together um, and we're gonna run parallel missions uh, to address the economic and wealth gap that exists across Kentucky. And, and we mean from West Louisville all the way to Appalachia. There's plenty of areas and communities that have been left behind and have been ignored for years. So, so we're hoping to take grant programs and capital investments into those areas to help with home ownership and small businesses. So our, our, our thing is if you're looking for an organization that, that's out to make an impact and not just be a traditional bank or a credit union, that's really what we're trying to do. Our goal is to impact the state of Kentucky in a positive manner. 
Thank you, Jim. And uh, Alicia? So briefly, um, I think of Bellarmine as one of the most, uh, as I said, innovative and forward thinking institutions in the Louisville area. And so as, uh, as an alumni of, um, of, of the university, I think it's, to, it's in the community's best interest um, to stay connected with this very important institution that is really, um, I just can't say enough about how, um, how great it's been to partner with Bellarmine as an institution. And um, we're now starting to move forward into other partnerships and applying for grants, et cetera. So um, as an alumni, obviously you have that important connection to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the university and uh, that helps move progress forward. Thank you, Eva. Is she still on? I know she uh, did have class to run to. So if so, we will. Is she still there? If not, let's move on to Mandela. Yeah, thanks so much. I would say that helping with network, uh, that would be a great tool as well. And uh, helping with creating more uh, partnership would be helpful as well to support the Bellamini community uh, to be successful or um, to achieve their goals. And Lauren, what do you want Bellarmine alumni to know? Uh, specifically related to the Live, Work, Wait, Serve program, uh, so many of our alums are doing amazing things in the community, whether you're volunteering for an organization or serve on a board at an organization. If there is an organization that you know has a special project or, or uh, a need that, that could benefit from the perspective of a great Bellarmine student, uh, we'd love to hear about that and to help get connected uh, with these opportunities through this program. Uh, but even broadly, you know, it is, there's so many great ways for alums uh, and employer partners to get involved with Bellarmine. Uh, so whether it's, uh, you know, being willing to, to connect with the student for an informational interview or job shadow experience, which might be a short bit of time, uh, or a more significant commitment, like coming up, uh, collaborating on an internship experience or hiring a Bellarmine student, Particip participating in our alumni mentor program, so many different ways to get involved and, and providing a meaningful work experience for a student is an incredible gift back to the institution. Yes, it, it certainly is an incredible gift. And we have so many alumni who are giving back of their, of their time and their talents and their treasures to our institution to help us to see us to grow and continue to, to establish even more community partners. But we are um, at that seven o'clock hour. And so that means we are wrapping up. Um, we hope you've enjoyed tonight's little um, snapshot in terms of um, community partners and engagement. And if you want to explore more possibilities or maybe you have an idea or have a connection for how we can um, generate continued excitements and collaboration, um, Bethany Pageant in the alumni office is dropping my contact information in the chat and feel free to connect with me um, with questions and I am absolutely happy to help you navigate um, so we can make those things happen. And if you like tonight's session, I just wanted to remind you that we do have our final um, town hall series, our third and final one um, on April 6th that we'll be looking and exploring the transformative student experience. So if you enjoyed hearing from our students today, um, you're going to, to love um, the lineup on April 6th. So be sure to join us. And then finally, I see um, some Knights fans in the audience. Um, I hope you're going to be tuning in. Uh, we got a great game this evening. I know I'm headed home, going to be grabbing some dinner and going to be watching um, Knights men's basketball take on Pepperdine in the semifinals at 8 p.m. Um, we're going to be dropping really quickly a link in the chat for how you can watch, listen, or view stats online. Uh, but again, once again, we want to thank all of tonight's panelists. I want to thank our alumni tuning in both on Zoom and Facebook Live. And as always, we hope you have a wonderful, safe, and enjoyable evening. We look forward to seeing you on campus soon. And as always, go Knights. Thank you all.